Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, PHP Basics tutorial on classes and objects. Um, in this video, I'm just going to um, go over some of the sort of terminology and sort of show you a few things that you can do and how to use a class uh, and objects and all that nonsense. Um, so I'm going to be working with this PHP file here. Um, I've got it open in my text editor at the moment. As usual, it's currently blank; it just contains the opening and closing tags. And also, I've got it open in my browser window here. Um, so as you can see at the minute, absolutely nothing happens. So what we're going to do is use this uh, file to sort of go over some of the sort of basics of classes. And we'll show you how to define them, um, how to use them, I guess. So um, a class in PHP is basically a collection of um, functions and properties. And they all sort of work together, if that sort of makes sense. Um, the best way to do this will be to do some examples, so I'm going to show you that now. Um, so to define a class in PHP, uh, you use the class keyword, um, and then following that is the name of the class, so I'm just going to create an example class, and then following that um, there is a opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket, so just a standard block as you would use with like an if statement or any loop. Um, so inside this class we can define a function or method as they're called, um, uh, and we do that using the function keyword um, and then we just give the function a name though so for example even um, I could give a um, I could uh, add the test method to the example class that we're defining by defining function test and then in here just to test it I'm just going to do echo testing um, one thing that you do need to do is um, define um, sort of the scope of the method, I suppose it's called. Um, so this is either public, private, or protected. Um, in this video, we're only going to be looking at public and private. In my next part, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, the pr protected method and what it does. So if we were to define this method as public, all we need to do for that is to add the public keyword before the function keyword. So to define a public function or a public method, you just do public function and then the function name as you would with a normal function definition. Um, I probably should point out at this point, uh, actually I probably should point out earlier, but at this point I'm going to say uh, that if you haven't used uh, um, sort of user defined functions before, um, then you probably should go and watch my functions video. Um, the reason for that is that I'm going to make quite a lot of, sort of comparisons with functions, so um, if you don't know what they are or how to use them, then this won't make a huge amount of sense. Um, it's quite complicated as it is, there's quite a lot of awkward terminology like public, private and all that nonsense, so yeah. Um, so anyway, to get back to what I was saying, uh, you can use this as a um, function sort of directly, so for example I could call this function, like you know you would normally call a function by doing like test, like so, oops. Um, this obviously wouldn't work at the moment because this function is not defined, it's actually a method inside this class you can access this directly by using the uh, double semicolon operator um, so you use it like so uh, first comes the name of the class so this bit here corresponds to this here uh, and then there's the double semicolon and then following it is the name of the method or function that you want to call so that corresponds to that so if I reload our page now you can see we get the output testing um, so what we're doing actually, what we're actually doing here is calling the function in a sort of static way, um, as opposed to whatever the opposite is called. I guess dynamic, but don't know. Um, so uh, what this is actually doing is using this as a static function, uh, and you can define a function as static by using the static keyword. So this comes after the public keyword, or private. It would say, or like alternatively, it could say private there, where it says public. Um, and before the function keyword. So you'd have public static function. And what this means is that you have to call this function like this. You can't use like the other method that I'm going to show you in a, min in a minute. So reloading this now will just show the same output testing because we haven't changed the function. All we've done is changed how, we, um, how it's defined. So that's sort of the basics of static functions inside classes. Um, if you download any script or something from the internet, you will often find like a huge load of functions inside one big class. Um, the reason for this is that they do it to sort of help prevent um, naming convention sort of collisions. So if there's always, or if, the, if you've like defined a function called test, 
um, it won't be um, it won't cause any problems that use the same function name inside a class. So that's sort of why they do it because PHP didn't have uh, proper namespace support um, until quite recently. But anyway, um, that's not really relevant at the moment. Um, so anyway, let's move on to um, non-static functions. So what I'm going to do is just remove the static keyword. You don't have to like you don't have to use dynamic or anything like that. You just remove the static keyword, and that makes it not static. So to call a um, sort of method in a way that isn't static, you first need to create an instance of the class. Uh, and the way you do that is by defining it sort of into a variable. So let's create a new variable called um, what should we call it? Well, let's just call it example. Let's, let's just call it. Let's call it class because it's different to the name. There we go. So class equals, and then use the new keyword. So oops, class equals new example. Oh, uh, and this example here is just the name of the class. And what this will do is it'll take this class, it'll create an object, and assign it to this variable. Um, so the object will have all of the properties of the class, and it will also have all of the methods. So when you have an object, whoops, here, object, um, to call one of its methods, you use the um, sort of arrow symbol sort of thing. Um, so say if I wanted to call the test method of this class object, I would do class, then a sort of arrow. So this is two symbols, it's the um, hyphen and the uh, greater than or less than, whichever one this is. Uh, less than, less than symbol. <laughs> um, so then you do that, sort of like a little arrow. Obviously you spell the variable right. Um, and then you just do the um, function or method. So you do test, like so. If I reload the page now, you can see we get the same output, which is testing. Um, and you can like pass in parameters here. So if, say if I did, say if I added a string parameter to this test method, and then did echo string, obviously with the dollar sign, and then here I did string, and reload the page now, you can see we get the output string. So you can use these just like normal functions. You can pass in things and all that good stuff. Um, so the next thing I should talk about are properties. So this is like a method, and you can also define class properties. So I'm going to do that above the function here, and define a new property called string. So to do that, I used uh, I have to give it um, like a scope as well. So um, this is either public, private, or protected, like I mentioned before. So to define a class property, just do the um, sort of how you can access it, public or private. Um, and then you just define it as you would a normal variable. So I'm going to call um, this property string, and I'm going to set it equal to um, just an empty string for now. Um, so now um, what we can do is use this property inside of our test function. So I can remove this uh, parameter here and change this echo to this, and then the same little arrow thing, string. Oh, hang on, that might not work. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll find out. Actually, let's find out now. Let's just remove that and see if you're allowed to use the word string as a property. Apparently you are. My editor doesn't know that. Um, well, I mean, let's go with that. Um, so, the thing that you need to sort of notice here is the this variable. If you ever try to use this variable sort of outside of a class or sort of in your script anywhere, you will have got an error from PHP telling you it's a reserved variable. Um, this variable is the same as this class variable, except it's in the class. So from inside here, there's no way you could know like or access this variable without knowing its name. So that's why they've created this this variable. It points to the current object of the class that you're inside. So this string is the same as outside using class string. Um, the other thing you might have noticed is that you define a property with the dollar symbol and then you don't sort of get it back with one. Um, that's just the way it is. That's the, that's the convention. Um, so this is how you access a property inside of a class. To access it outside of a class, you can just do the same thing. So say you could, uh, just bring this down a little bit, you could set the string property before you call the test method using class string equals uh, example. 
if I reload our page now, you can see we get the output example. Because what we're doing here is setting the property, so this line here is setting this property to example, and then when we call the test method, um, this uh, sort of gets the value of the property that we set and changed down here and outputs it. So that's why we're getting this output. So that's how you access a um, property um, from outside of a class here using the object variable and uh, how you access it from inside of a class using the this variable. You can set them obviously inside of a class as well. Um, a quite a common thing to do is have like a function that sets a property but you can do it however you like. Um, so let's move on to the private keyword which I also should mention. So say if you had like a function inside the class that was only used by um, other functions inside that class. So it could be like a I don't know, sort of like a sort of library type file that's, n that's not supposed to be used by people using your class. It's supposed to be used just internally. So you could define that as private. So say if I made this function test private, I could just do that by changing this public keyword to private, like so. Um, and then this will now fail. If I reload the page, you'll see why. You can see we get fatal error at call to private method. Um, example which is the class name and test which is the method name so this is how you would call that function statically which is why I talked about that earlier um, so it's telling you that you can't use a method because it's set to private um, but from like another function you would be able to call this so let's uh, move on to that so say if I made another function that was public sorry about the car chavs um, so let's define another uh, function that is public by using the public keyword function and then the function name which will be test uh, public I guess and now if we change this uh, call down here to also call well to change to call the test public method we can uh, now reload this and we get no output uh, no error more importantly which means that the test public method has been called um, and it just hasn't done anything because, well, it doesn't do anything. Um, sorry, okay. Uh, so what I need to talk about next is how to call a method that's inside the class. So you do that using the this keyword again as it points to the current object of the current class. So it, like I said before, it, this here is the same as class out here. So I just do this test. So this is basically the same as this line here, except you are using the this keyword. And because you're inside the class, you will be allowed to call a private function. So if we reload our page now, you can see we get the output example again. So that's basically the um, sort of basics of public and private uh, methods. You can also set a um, private uh, property for a class. And the last thing I want to talk about is the construct function which is not really related to anything I've talked about so far, so I'm just going to horribly sort of jump cut to it. Um, this is like a special function called a magic method, um, but you define it in the same way as you do normally. So you do public, public function, underscore, underscore, construct. And this function will be, this method, sorry, will be called um, when you create a new instance of the class. So say I just remove um, this call here. Um, okay, well, no reason. Oh yeah, just to demonstrate. Um, and then the construct function can do echo uh, testing, or test will do. This will now output the um, variable well, the string test to the screen, as you saw, see. Um, so when you create a new uh, instance of the class, PHP will automatically call the construct function if it exists. Um, you can pass parameters to this function in the same way as you would normally. So say if I defined a string variable here, and pass, and then just did, uh, oh god, right, there we go, good, and did echo string, don't delete the line, very silly, like so. Um, then you could just pass in something here, so test. 
You can have like an un unlimited number of these as you can with a normal function. So really like this, you see we can still get the output test, but now we are passing something into this uh, construct function. Um, there are a few others, but um, you can look up magic methods on php.net. Um, usually the construct one is the only one you generally use. It's most useful, definitely. Um, you can access other functions, so I could do, for example, uh, this. I could do this. Um, although this will just output nothing, because we are not setting the property before the um, uh, function is called, because it's called on this line and we're not setting the property until this line. So that is the basics of classes in PHP. Um, I don't think I have forgotten anything. Um, and in my next uh, sort of additional part, um, I'm going to be talking about the protected method and extending, uh, or extending classes even. Uh, so thank you for watching and hopefully this was sort of useful. Um, the aim was to sort of go over some of the terminology and I think I've done that. So yeah, there you go.